Starship gets a presentation date. No, for real this time. SpaceX aces three missions in four days. Starlink gets a major upgrade, and we finish with shoots, brah. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Everyone sees February as one last month to get through so Starship orbital flights can begin. You know, of course, that is so long as the federal government makes the right call with the environmental assessment. But while we all wait out the month, Elon is giving us something to look forward to in the meantime. Last night, he finally confirmed that the much anticipated 2022 Starship presentation will be next Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time. And that the reason for all the Starship shuffling at the launch site lately is because they will indeed be stacking SN20 on Booster 4 for the presentation. While the first orbital rated Starship sits next to the pad in preparation for this event, its booster sits adjacent to it and was recently hooked up to a crane so it too can be moved to the tower. It also had its grid fins unshackled and 29 Raptor engine bells painted. There is no confirmation at this time who was invited to attend this year. Up the road at the construction yard, more parts for future Starships and boosters continue to be built. Same with the new wide bay, which is now four levels tall. If you would like to get in on this action, SpaceX is always hiring down there in Brownsville, Texas. Just visit their website for all the current openings. And same goes for every other SpaceX site, including their Roberts Road location at the Cape, which is currently undergoing some major construction for refurbishment facilities and other undisclosed buildings, possibly Starship related. A couple of months ago, it was reported that NanoRacks, Blue Origin, and Northrop Grumman were the winners of NASA's $415.6 million commercial low Earth orbit destination contracts to develop private space stations. This week, the agency released their selection statement, providing insight as to how exactly they came to choose the winners. There were nine companies in total who competed for the opportunity, and SpaceX was one of them, proposing to convert an HLS Starship into a space station. However, despite NASA finding strengths in their proposal, like having a proven design and a strategy for rendezvous and docking, NASA did report significant weaknesses in areas such as lack of detail and definition with payload capabilities and only proposing a single docking port. 2022 is expected to be an extremely busy year for SpaceX missions, averaging one Falcon launch per week, and this week seemed to solidify those expectations. Launching three missions in just four days, starting with the launch of CSG-2 on Monday after being delayed several times because of weather and once due to a wayward Royal Caribbean cruise ship. The Earth Imaging Satellite for Italy was carried atop of the first booster ever converted from a Falcon Heavy first stage, and SpaceX provided us some crystal clear tracking footage of stage step from the ground, as well as fairing separation. The sunset landing at LZ-1 was also quite an amazing sight to see. Stage one landing like a pole. An hour later, the satellite was deployed successfully, drifting off into the black abyss. Then on Wednesday, SpaceX launched a U.S. spy satellite on a brand new rocket from the National Reconnaissance Office out of Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, with clear skies for once, providing us another excellent view of a coastal landing. Stage one, landing leg, deploy. The green booster making it look all too easy. And then on Thursday, SpaceX returned to the Cape to launch a flock of 49 Starlink satellites from Pad 39A. Flying it down the Florida coast on a southern trajectory, allowing the booster to make a successful sixth touchdown on the autonomous drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, stationed south of the Keys. And speaking of Starlink, Elon revealed earlier this week that SpaceX is now offering premium Starlink services to those looking for a little more speed and better overall performance. The antenna that comes with it is twice the size of the standard user terminal with a broader scan angle and will cost premium users five times as much at $2,500. And the service fee, which normally costs $99 per month, is $500 for premium. So clearly their target customers are businesses and teenage gamers with access to their mom's credit card. This week, Space News reported that the Cargo Dragon capsule used to resupply the ISS for CRS-24 did encounter the same parachute lead lag issue prior to splashdown on January 24th that Crew-2 had with one of its chutes on November 8th. To quote agency spokesman Josh Finch in a statement to Space News, during the return of the SpaceX CRS-24 mission, teams observed a single main parachute that lagged during inflation like the return of the Crew-2 mission. The vertical descent rate of both flights was within the system design margins at splashdown, and all four main parachutes fully opened prior to splashdown on both missions. NASA is currently reviewing the data ahead of the Crew-4 mission in April, but quote, we don't see anything that's off nominal that concerns us from a parachute standpoint, said Bill Gerstenmaier during a November 9th briefing. 
NASA and SpaceX are holding a press conference today at noon for the Crew-4 mission. Shoots may or may not be related. Lead lag is a fairly common issue that happens when multiple parachutes are deployed at once. The selfish ones just tend to take up all the good air. It's fascinating how, despite all the bells and whistles that come with rocket development, these sky blankets are known for causing the biggest headaches in the industry. And if you'd like to know why that is, I invite you to watch my shoot documentary bra, link below. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to those of you supporting the channel on Locals and watching on Rumble, the YouTube alternative platform for anti-cancel culture patriots around the world. Have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.